More than a month has passed since Panzer Stadium last played host to Penn State men's lacrosse. Brilliant setup man Grant Ament should get the home fans reacquainted quickly with a scoring ability of Mac O'Keefe, who's among the national leaders in goals. Trey LeClaire is the master blaster for Ohio State, a team with precision on offense, and a warrior named Ryan Tarafenko to support its cause on defense. Buckeye boss Nick Myers has his team raring to go against the Nittany Lions and Jeff Tambroni next. It's an overcast Sunday night for a big game in University Park, PA. This evening, the number seven Buckeyes of Ohio State come marching into a conference showdown with top-ranked Penn State for college lacrosse on BTN. Let the games begin. A very pleasant welcome to you. Along with Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. These two teams were at opposite ends of the spectrum with regard to emotion last week. How do they face up tonight? For Penn State, it's all about handling success. They knocked off Maryland for the first time in program history a week ago. Last year, they beat Hopkins for the first time in program history, lost their next two regular season games, missed the Big Ten tournament. For Ohio State, how do you rebound from a home loss to Rutgers where you were simply dominated and only shot 13%? Penn State has the most prolific offense in the country, Mark. They do things, the way they approach the game just manages to put enemy defenders back on their heels. The first thing that they possess is Grant Amon, number one, and a great assist man, perhaps the greatest assist man in college lacrosse. But watch Amon sweep across the face of this Maryland defense, and he does these step away, fade away feeds. And when he steps away from the defense, that creates a lot of ball watching and space in the middle of the field from the Penn State wings that collapse and get great scoring opportunities off of Amon's feeding. Ohio State netminder Josh Kearson's the man who's going to stand up to all that firepower. The scholar athlete in his second year as a starter, he has the opportunity to shine tonight. At the opposite end, Penn State's going to go with Colby Kniece, the veteran keeper. He's ruled the crease here in Happy Valley for three years. He just, Mark, he has that big save ability, that wow factor. Yeah, he really does. And, and Kniece has really grown into his own third-year starter. As a freshman, he had the defense really in charge of him. Now he has earned their respect, and he is the general on that back line along with Chris Sabia. This is a marquee matchup at the face-off X. Big time. Uh, Gerard Arceri, so dominant last weekend against Maryland. Justin Inacio, I think he is a face-off man along with his wings, especially Ryan Tarafenko. They can give Penn State and Gerard trouble. Great to have you on board for college lacrosse on BTN. Mike McCloskey is your referee. Peter Buchanan, Daniel Miller rounding out those zebra stripes. Ohio State comes up with the initial draw in the red. Seven and one, seventh in the land, Buckeyes. Eight and one, top ranked in the nation in white. Penn State back home defending its home turf for the first time in quite a while. Coach Jeff Tambroni was anxious to see how the crowd would develop around Panzer Stadium tonight. They're packed. They've, they've come out in full support. It's Panzamonium over in the student section. Well played by you. Colby Smith to the alley. Rolls back and fires. He missed that one on the short side. Bobby Good. Burns was there defensively. Good shot by Ohio State. Again, it's about shooting percentage. Six out of 45 last week. Max Edelman of Rutgers made 17 saves. Ohio State's going to get their chances tonight. Can they cash in? Coach Meyer said, don't judge us by that Rutgers performance and give Rutgers a lot of credit. Jackson Reed sweeping across the top. Reed tries to get underneath. Good defense there from Bobby Burns as we hear the whistle. They'll reset the shot clock. It'll stay Ohio State ball. Ball was stuck in the cross of a Penn State player when it hit the ground. That's an automatic stoppage of play, a technical violation, and that means a fresh 80 seconds for Ohio State with which to work. Nick Cardeal is defending Trey LeClaire, Ohio State's top goal scorer and point producer. That's an interior matchup to watch. Colby Smith getting downhill into the alley. Swing it back. Reed play it top side. Jasinski on the dead run and Kanise makes a fine and flashy stop on LeClaire to get his night off to an excellent start. Along the sideline this bounds off of O'Keefe 
And it will be Ohio State possession. Terrific save by Colby Kinese offside. And because O'Keefe tried to play that ball, it was still a shot. But since he tried to play the ball and he changed the impetus of it going out of bounds, that becomes a turnover, Ohio State possession. Nothing makes a goalie feel better than making a stop like that in the first couple of minutes of the game. I loved how Ohio State went to the right side of the field, reversed field to Jasinski in open space. Look for them to do that all night. Try to drag that Penn State defense to one side, bang it backside and get uh, an underneath opportunity. Jasinski works from the top. Next in line, it's JT Bugliosi, sophomore from Maryland. Bugliosi picked up on the perimeter by Tommy Wright, the lead long stick midfielder for the Nittany Lions. Bring it back. Bugliosi will swing it. Behind the cage, Jack Myers, impressive freshman. He gets picked up by Chris Sabia, Penn State's best on the back end. Shot clock at 10. That pass from Griffin Hughes was too hot to handle. It bounced back onto the Buckeye defensive side. It'll be Penn State with its first offensive possession. Lightning quick restart, they're going to the goal. O'Keefe, then Ament, flash cut inside, score! Just like that, set up splendidly on the run. Brian Townsend with a dunk. This is the DNA of both offenses in a nutshell. Ohio State with about three minutes, a little over three minutes worth of possession. Only one shot to show for it. Penn State in transition. Look at the whistle awareness. Pick it up, put the stick up, stop your feet. I'm ready to go. And this is a transition opportunity. And you know Grant Amon, the nifty look. He's not gonna shoot that ball. Probably eight out of 10 attackmen in this country are gonna fire that, but he looks underneath, finds Townsend for the dip and dunk, and then the foul will be a push, wiped out by the goal. Just enough of a window there for Amen to find Townsend. His third of the season, Ryan with goals earlier in the campaign against Cornell and Jacksonville, one nothing for the number one ranked team in the lane. Anasio and Arceri, who know each other's face-off tendencies very, very well, off the ground, picking it up on the fly, Ryan Tarafanko, the outstanding short stick defensive midfielder, first team all-conference performer last year. One of the many things he has in his tool chest, ground balls on face-offs coming off of a wing. When you, got, when you put anybody on a wing on a face-off, long pole or with a shorty, they gotta be able to pick up ground balls. They gotta be able to sense where it's gonna pop out, pick up GBs under duress and get to open space to get possession for your team. Buckeyes working deliberately here around in the circle. Jackson Reed hanging out on the flank. Braden Peck, the long stick defender there with him. Reed, who has goals in seven of eight games this season, swims around a pick. Myers, Coach Myers wanted the pick game to be better this week for Ohio State. Slicing inside, losing it there just before the dive was Nick Musi. Crease violation. Crease, yeah, crease Give violation. Give the ball to Penn State, and like is their custom, they want to move it quickly to the offensive end. The top offensive team in the land. Wasn't a play on situation because no one for Penn State had possession of the ball. So with a loose ball in the crease, kill it right away, go the other direction. You mentioned those picks for Ohio State. That possession, we saw a lot of them, and that's a key for Penn State this weekend in this game. Jeff Tambroni saying we got to be disciplined, switch, communicate, and really work through those picks. Amen, working fluidly there. His pass gets out of the cross of Nick Spillane, who was cutting alertly to the goal. Tarafenko in transition. Ryan Tarafenko on the dish. Reed was stuffed. Follow-up chance from the long stick. Sent high by Jeff Henrik. Love the transition, and that's what Tarafenko can give you. The ball coming out after Spillane couldn't handle the feed. A notable absence here tonight, Joe. Number 25, Jack Kelly, midfielder for the Penn State Nittany Lions. A game-time scratch. So you're going to see Spillane. You're going to see Rayoun. You're going to see other guys have to step up here tonight in the absence of Kelly. Kelly, the sixth leading scorer for Penn State, who had tallied in each of his last seven games. Lucas Buckley on the hop, drawing an early double. 
Jasinski, the jitterbug midfielder, takes it and peels away from Tommy Wright's pressure. Trey LeClaire over the top of the Whistler that sails high, backed up on the end line by Jack Myers. Mark, they waited all day for a Sunday night tilt on BTN, and these two teams are playing with terrific tempo. We showed up a few hours before faceoff, and as I was walking onto the other side of the parking lot to the to the stadium, students were already outside the gates, probably about five or ten deep, waiting to get in. That was at five o'clock. An overcast night. Lights haven't fully taken effect here at Panzer Stadium. Jasinski slithering between defenders. Jack Jasinski off the rebound. Stopped by Kinnis, who's lightning and razor sharp in the first five minutes. This team is so much more than Grant Amon and Mac O'Keefe, and that primary reason is because of the midfield talent that Penn State possesses. TJ Malone just gets to the center of the field. He's gonna duck his shoulder, he's gonna spin back left-handed after establishing some space, and he's gonna stick it past Josh Kersen. The bench loves it. We're back at Penn State in a moment. Lacrosse on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right, talk to a State Farm agent today. Right to the State Farm state of success and it concerns Mac O'Keefe and Mark, he's made quite an impression over three seasons. Without question, he has been producing since day one when he stepped on this campus. Take a look at the numbers all the goal scoring records that he is in contention for and he's rounded out his game he's not just a shooter anymore he can feed we saw him last week against the university of maryland stepping away from defensive pressure finding guys underneath o'keefe and amon there's so many great duos in college lacrosse this season we just saw bernhardt and wisnowskis yesterday against the university of michigan for the maryland terrapins but I mean, for my money are sari and amon um, excuse me uh, o'keefe and amon Maybe the best in the business. Ohio State head coach Nick Myers was saying earlier in the week, you can't allow Penn State to turn two and three goals into six goals. Their offense is so apt to heat up quickly. They have a 3-2 advantage over the Buckeyes. Ohio State, after an extended struggle on that draw, comes up a winner with Henry. Again, this is a Penn, uh, an Ohio State team, not only with Anasio, but their wings. They are so good at getting, digging out ground balls, creating 50-50 situations. They are, they're brawny. You know, they are, they are big time athletes and, and guys that, that love to get dirty and make, make those strong plays. Colby Smith, sophomore from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. LeClaire, who hails from Western Canada, Surrey, British Columbia to be specific. Trey LeClaire crossing the field, loves his right. Good defensive work there. Sabia, who's annually among the league leaders, conference leaders, and caused turnovers. This will stay possession for Ohio State with a fresh shot clock. Loose ball push. Smart play by LeClaire. Just established position. Took the push from behind. And Ohio State gets another fresh 80. So 
LeClaire's the only person that's shown he can run by his matchup so far here tonight for Ohio State. On the other side, Ohio State thinking they could probably contain the shorties, the midfielders of the Nittany Lions. They've got to slide a, a much better. They're, they're not giving much support on slides. LeClaire could run by it or run through it. Either way, this is LeClaire from the top. Off the split dodge. Leans in. Short stick defense from Bobby Burns kept him at bay. Halfway through the shot clock now for the Buckeyes. Myers. Turns. Gets the double from Sabia. Help still from Cardiel. Myers a long way from the cooker. Smith taken down by Townsend who started the scoring for Penn State tonight. Content to keep it on the outside with Jackson Reed. Reed flings this one to the cage. That one rattled around the pipe. Another reset shot clock and Ohio State ball. Sneaky release by Reed. Looked like that may have clanged off the pipe and pinballed around a little bit. He got it. LeClaire is drawing slides. He's got to have his head up a little bit more and try to bang, try to find that area vacated by the slide. Some skip passes potentially. That last shot from Reed was all wrist. There was yeah. no real recoil to shoot. Snap that one off the pipe. Lucas Buckley delivers it back behind the cage. Myers is hanging out there. Getting late in the opening quarter. LeClaire bluffs it. Still in possession. Tommy Wright, a fixture with him at the long, field, long stick midfield spot. Jasinski drawing a couple of defenders. Reed around the pick. Fires wide of Kunis. Excellent pick. And that shot did hit Colby Kunis. So another 80-second reset for the Buckeyes. Kunis continued to bark his defensive assignments. As the officials come over to chat with the respective benches, timeout is called. Jeff Tambroni, I think he's on my side. I, I don't think that ball touched Colby Kinese. We, we I think he's upset about the reset shot clock. They've been playing a ton of defense here in the first quarter. Uh, we see if we can grab a replay of that shot. But I think that is what Coach Tambroni is taking issue with the officials that, that did not touch Colby Kinese. It did look like the ball, the trajectory did change a little bit. But but I, again, I, I can't tell with the naked eye. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah. these sure did. These were stops from Kines earlier in this contest. Very sharp in the opening period. This is an unconventional netminder. He uses his body. He'll leave his feet as well. But Colby Kines has really grown into and matured into this starting goaltender role for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And this is the shot in question. I don't know if that touched him. If it touched anything, it would be hit the top of the head of his stick. Very difficult to tell. You be a good lip reader. Jeff says it wasn't even close. And I, right, I'm the former goalie in the bunch, and I want goalies to have all the saves possible. He didn't stop that one. No, That's just my opinion. Yeah, and, and you've got two officials, the single side and the goal side, are, are looking at it, and it was the single side official who was to the left of Colby Kinese that single uh, that, that signaled the reset. He did have the best vantage point. No one overruled him or said no, no, no. So we're, we're going with Ohio State possession with another fresh 80. And Jeff Tambroni, I think twofold called that timeout. One, because there's no review in, in lacrosse to maybe argue his case a little bit, but two, give his defense a rest. I mean, they've been playing a ton at this end so far in the first. 13 minutes of action. Nittany Lions had the first two goals. LeClaire came back with a pair for Ohio State. Malone has given the locals the lead. Tail end of the opening quarter. Jackson Reed, the fourth leading scorer on this team. Switch it back behind the goal. Myers forced away by Sabia. From the top, Jasinski lets it fly, he scores! Jack Jasinski. 
the senior from Alabama. He's meant so much to this Ohio State team. One thing I see with the Buckeyes is Jeff Tambroni. You get that many possessions, you get that much time. You're going to eventually find pay dirt. A lot to ask for his defense. But look at Jasinski right here. I thought he could have come back and then pressed that edge to get it to LeClaire and try to get a little dump. But he's so quick. Look at the change of direction. He comes back, gets his arms free, feet set, and just zings it past Colby Canise. He's such a deceptive dodger. You talk about Grant Amon and his change of direction. Number five in the Scarlet Gray. He's, he's pretty darn good himself. His head coach couldn't say enough good things about him earlier this week about how he's developed as a teammate. His understanding of the game is terrific. Myers' drive caught the outside of the net. Possession time now for the Nittany Lions as Kanis throws a strike to Tommy Wright for the clear. It just started raining here in State College. You can see the fans putting their hoods up. These chrome bling bling helmets of both ball clubs showing the raindrops. So we'll see how the weather will affect the stick work and the footing as it just started raining here in State College. The rain has arrived a little earlier than expected. The forecast were for it to be upon us in about an hour's time. Final minute of the opening quarter. Nick Spillane going to do a lot of the heavy lifting tonight with Jack Kelly out. Sophomore midfielder was a late scratch. Grant Amen, who's had to deal with injury last year, on occasion this year. Spillane gets inside. Worked over there by the Buckeye defense. Solid effort turned in. Going to be ruled a loose ball hold against Henrik. It'll be Penn State possession for Dan Rayum, the 19-year-old from Michigan. Latter stages of the opening quarter. O'Keefe from downtown whistled that one wide. Malone was there to back it up. O'Keefe loves that little dip, toe drag, and then step away shot. It's reminiscent of a James Harden stepping back on those three-pointers. Amen speed inside, clangs around off of Dylan Foles. Kearson comes up with just a couple of seconds left in the quarter. Not enough time, you would think, as Evan Riss runs it out. Ohio State and Penn State in a real good Sunday night showdown with college lacrosse on BTN. Two of the top seven teams in the land. 3-3 after one. Back to University Park, PA, right after these words. 1st on BTN, don't miss a top five showdown between storied programs when the Terrapins clash with the Wildcats. Big Ten women's lacrosse, Thursday, 8 Eastern, on BTN and the Fox Sports app. As far as the offense goes for Ohio State, Mark, there's been no indecision from Trey LeClaire. They needed someone to light the spark and get things rolling, and Trey LeClaire, when you come into a game with 25 goals and two assists, you know what he's going to do when he gets the ball. And trying to stop him with a head of steam is like trying to get in front of a locomotive. You're going to get smoked. And, and Penn State has done a much better job in the last third of that first quarter limiting LeClaire's looks. Two-time All-American, two-time second-team All-Big Ten, Trey LeClaire. As the second quarter unfolds, Rainy conditions here at Panzer Stadium. Penn State, top-ranked team in the land. They've won their last five games overall. Spillane on the dead run. Nick Spillane pulls up. The split dodge there, he came back to fire wide. On the end line, Dylan Folds has it for the Nittany Lions. Marked immediately by Joey Salisbury. I like the job the Ohio State defense is doing on Grant Amon. They are marking him one-on-one -on -one with, with Matt Borges. He's a punisher, a very vicious checker, but I like how they're staying true to not ball watching with Grant Amon, which you have a tendency to do with his quickness and change of direction. O'Keefe inside. Matt O'Keefe. First time O'Keefe has vacated the left side of 
the offensive box. He has been living on the left side, and I love this cut and the motion that he provides. I think Nick Myers is asking to watch some moving picks on the inside, but they drag the offense to the far side and watch the timing of this cut by Mac O'Keefe. And he's able to absorb a couple of checks, body up, and the bench loves it when number three scores another. Fans can tell, Mark, as they get the cutaways to the sideline that the rain is coming down pretty good. How does rain influence lacrosse players in their pockets? They, they make the pockets contract, or, or they bag out. Excuse me, they get much deeper, and so the ball starts to whip out. It can go straight into the ground, but also, depending upon the footwear these guys have on. We haven't seen anybody slip just yet, but think about when you're driving in that first initial rainfall, how the roads get slick versus if it's been raining for a couple of hours. That's kind of the way the turf reacts once some moisture hits it. The guys are so precise with their shooting, so it may influence the delivery of the ball out of the cross. Penn State in wide in possession, a 4-3 leader. On the move, Cole Willard. Bring it back for Nate Buller. Buller gets into the alley. He'll spin and find O'Keefe. O'Keefe picked up by Henrik. Measures him at sticks length. Amen for play hide and seek back behind the goal. Flushed out there by Kearson. That allowed his defender to balance back up. Borges already two-time all Big Ten defender of the week this season. The pass to the inside rolled wide of the goal. Chased down to the sideline. It'll stay with Penn State. Again, I like the organization of this Ohio State defense. I like how Borges isn't going for those there's jitterbug moves. He's just playing position, keeping his stick in a great spot, upfield, on the gloves of Amon. And again, his teammates are not being spectators. A long skip pass, and O'Keefe rifles one to the roof. Five shots, five goals for Penn State. They need Josh Kearson, the Buckeyes do, to, to make a save. But this is a rocket by Mac O'Keefe. Watch him just fade up. Amon's always looking for number three. That's an incredible feed. And you don't really expect to close out in this particular situation. But if you're going to do it, you got to come a little bit harder and go through the attackman. But Mac O'Keefe, Grant Amon didn't challenge Matt Borges that time. He just kept his distance underhand whip and beautiful feed O'Keefe closing in on a record-setting performance this one's bounced wide of the cage Nasio jogs off earning uh, the Buckeyes possession in a, a two-goal deficit on the road seventh ranked Ohio State 4-0 away from Columbus already this season Smith picked up on the outside by Burns. Haven't seen any extra man offense of which to speak so far as Kanis makes another stab up high. It's, it's a difference in the game right now is the goaltending of Kanis and this defense for Penn State versus the lack of saves that the Buckeyes are not getting at this stage of the contest. Moving it here quickly, that's deflected. Kearson finds it at the top of the crease. Tiptoes around and then starts the uh, clear for the Buckeyes with help from Lucas Buckley, who'll stretch his legs into the offensive third. Almost four minutes into the quarter. College lacrosse on BTN. Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon with you from Panzer Stadium. University Park, PA, home of the Penn State Nittany Lions. A shout out of thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew for their efforts throughout the day and night as Jasinski lines up picked up on the perimeter by Cardiel Nick Cardiel who shares my birthday no kidding he's just a little bit younger <laughs> just a smidge I, just, have, I noticed that he shares my birthday and then I looked at the year and said up oh, I wouldn't have been able quite to, the same I wouldn't have been able to tell unless you, you informed me <laughs> Jasinski opens up and he's back and wide Backed up on the end line, it'll stay Ohio State ball. Buckeyes have numbers right now. Broken stick for the Nittany Lions if they can identify this, but they don't. 
Nick McAvoy came sprinting in off the sidelines, short stick defensive mid to, to balance up. Uh, referees wouldn't give him a quick restart because they weren't on the spot, the correct spot where the ball went out of bounds, and that's not sitting well with the Ohio State coaching staff. LeClaire with some get up and go. Sabia right there with him. Sabia will watch LeClaire roll this at the end of a shot clock violation. Good defensive stand by the Nittany Lions. I've been talking about the organization of this Ohio State defense. You got to be impressed with these guys in all the all white. They have done a terrific job outside of a couple of one on ones, Jasinski and LeClaire. But their team defense has been spot on so far here in the second quarter. Nittany Lions with three of the last four goals. The last two in particular from Mac O'Keefe, who is one now, one tally away from tying the program record for goals all time. Amex sprints, feeds it in tight. Right. Dan Rayum, and Penn State is doubling up Ohio State. This offense never stops for the Nittany Lions. They're in constant motion. And why wouldn't you be when you have number one, the best distributor in the game right now? If you get open, Amen is going to find you. Amen is just going to sweep across the back of the cage. There's that pick by Malone. And he's able to just get enough separation. But look at Rayu. Just step around Tarafenko. Little fake right there, hesitation, feed, finish. Nittany Lions are rolling right now. Break time for us on a rainy Sunday night in Happy Valley. Get you back for the continuation of the second quarter in a moment. Folks, coming up next on BTN, the Big Show recaps everything happening in the conference with highlights, interviews, and in-depth expert analysis. It's the Big Show next right here on BTN. As the rain continues to fall, it's not slowing down these two. No, not at all. The Batman and Robin of Penn State lacrosse. Great feeder, great finisher, and you just take a look at that single season record 52 assists for Grant Amon. That's missing a game, missing part of the Maryland game. It was only a few, maybe about a half a quarter. And, and we're, we still have a lot of lacrosse left. I mean, these guys have three conference games left to play. They'll be in the Big Ten tournament by all intents and purposes. They can continue to roll. And then the NCAA tournament. So who knows what those assist totals for Amon could look like. Big Ten tournament this season hosted in Piscataway. Rutgers will be the host. Amon already has four assists this evening. He had a nine assist game earlier this season against Cornell. Arseri comes out of the pack with a face-off win as he teams up with Brian Townsend to get Penn State another possession. The only goals in this second quarter belong to the guys in the white jerseys. And this is a stage of the game where Ohio State's got to buckle down. Kearson has to make a save. They need a defensive stop in a big way. And again, I, I think Borges is, is doing a pretty good job on Eamon. And he still has four helpers. Number one's been dancing pretty effectively. Yeah. If he's dealing with an injury, you might not know it. Spillane powering his way in. Strong work defensively there on the perimeter by Hendrick. Rayum will go on Tarafenko. Foles keeps it hot. Spillane to O'Keefe. O'Keefe lost it there before he could pull the trigger. And away come the Buckeyes. Well, that's the difference in the closeout. When you come out, Stick in the gloves, lifting. You disrupt the shooting motion of any shooter, even the one as prolific, prolific as Mac O'Keefe. Creates the loose ball. Gorgeous, great double, great closeout. That's a turnover the Buckeyes desperately needed. Gorgeous, second best on Ohio State when it comes to ground balls. Collecting another one there as we're seven minutes deep in the second frame. 6-3 for top-ranked Penn State. Jasinski on the go, playing a little two-man game here. Cat and mouse with Tarafenko. Jasinski comes that one, and it's Kanise with a stop and a quick clear. Expert on the pass there to Bobby Burns. No numbers advantage. The Buckeyes get back in the hole very well. Excellent outlet pass from Colby Kanise. We've seen that be a lost art. 
in lacrosse these days, those quick outlet passes. One of the reasons, I was talking to a, a goalie coach this week, and he was saying these goalies play with such deep bags, such deep pockets, and it's needed in this era of the shot clock when you don't want to give up rebounds. You want to be able to make quick saves and, and good saves, but trying to get that ball out for good outlet passes, sometimes with that deep pocket is, is, is troublesome for goaltenders. Oh, that last one was masterful, though, from Kinesse, who's been excellent in the first 30 minutes tonight. Buckley will defend. Spillane turns, or yes, that is Spillane, along with Trainer. down they go. And the way to the races comes Borges once more for Ohio State. Slippery conditions on a rainy Sunday night in University Park, PA. LeClaire will settle things down. On the exchange here, Jasinski thought about it, gets quickly doubled. Slashing in off the wing, the bouncer goes wide. It'll be Penn State ball. Good hustle by the Nittany Lions. Not a bad shot for Jasinski. It just went out in a weird angle of the field. And Robbie Black, heady play, beating the Ohio State player to the end line to get possession and, in essence, create a turnover. Ohio State held in check offensively in this second quarter as subs come on for the Nittany Lions. If I'm Ohio State, I want to get that ball to LeClaire at the top of the box and have him dodging downhill a little bit more. Test that Penn State matchup like he did in the first, that little sequence in the first quarter where he scored two quick ones. Trainer and O'Keefe exchanging the ball. Henrik there for Ohio State. Cole Willard is next. A bull dodge inside, flicking inside there off of O'Keefe and collected by Kearson. Ryan Tarafenko brings it to safety. Play it on to LeClaire. Gets underneath his check. Sabia goes to the goal and sent it wide. Early offense, courtesy of Trey LeClaire, gets underneath, and there's that strength of number 44 just powering through a couple of really tough checks and getting right on the doorstep, shot just a little bit off. But that's the guy. That is the matchup. Kevin Fox behind the cage for Penn State, there to defend. Tarafenko tracked down on the perimeter by Trainer. Jasinski maneuvering against Cardio. Cardio with a great check. Transition time for Trainer. No numbers. Penn State will just be happy with the expert defense there by Cardio. That was a perfectly timed check, and that is a tendency that was probably noticed on film, courtesy Jack Jasinski, when he brings that stick back, perfectly timed by Nick Cardio, slapping it onto the turf, and in essence, giving Penn State the ball back. Ohio State allows an average of 10 goals per game this season. Penn State standing at six, with 3.45 to go in the opening half. Off the exchange of turnovers, back come the Buckeyes, looking to carve into this Nittany Lion lead. LeClaire on the quick stick feed that came away, it went right on through. It'll be another turnover back to Penn State. Good idea, a little lacking on the execution. If I'm LeClaire, I probably would have cut that myself, stepped in and, and fired it, because he was a, only, what, six yards off the crease. And that is virtually impossible to stop when he gets his hands free. He was trying to get it to Brandon Barker. He didn't succeed. Car deal. Sends it there for Townsend. As Mac O'Keefe will call for it. A little bit more than three minutes with which to work in the opening half. College lacrosse on BTN. A good one between two teams top seven in the land. And the timeout has been taken. Raindrops continuing to fall on this Sunday night. Ohio State and Penn State squaring off in conference play 
as we look at the Big Ten standings. Yesterday in Baltimore, Johns Hopkins got out to a 6-0 lead against Rutgers. Blue Jays moved to 2-0. A lot of people say you, you get the three, you can almost guarantee your spot in the Big Ten tournament. And then down at Maryland, the Terrapins, the Wolverines gave them all they could handle with the 10-man ride, aggressive play. But Maryland and Austin Henningsen winning all the face-offs. Jared Bernhardt, Logan Wisnowskis led the Terrapins to their first Big Ten victory. So this is, uh, <laughs> I mean, you talk about a log jam a little bit in the middle of the pack. Hopkins right now 2-0. and And I think based on the body of work, you can probably say that Penn State and Maryland have bubbled up as probably the two favorites. So who is that third best team in the Big Ten? Uh, Rutgers knocked off Ohio State last week, but now the Buckeyes with an opportunity to take a bite out of Penn State. Make no mistake about it, this conference still as strong as ever. And Johns Hopkins 2-0 again. That, that, are they the third best team in, in the Big Ten, knocking off Rutgers yesterday and, and, and holding off a late Scarlet Knight rally? These games, Penn State, Ohio State, usually close ones. Shooting percentages obviously factor in throughout, and this is where Ohio State was upset with its performance a week ago. And like a week ago with Max Edelman having 17 saves, Colby Kinnise tonight has been terrific with a handful of saves of his own, and he's seeing the ball really, really well. The only two guys that have been able to solve him are Trey LeClaire and Jack Jasinski, and that's, again, why I feel like they need to, to find a way to get 44 and his arms free to, to get some shots on cage. Those three goals for Nick Myers' squad coming in the opening quarter. Three of the last six games between these two squads decided by two goals or less. You hear all the field level communication as Folds puts it in the cross of Spillane. Spillane marked by Evan Riss. Aim it around a pick from Folds. Board just stays with him. O'Keefe lets it fly. Just missed. Reset! Reset! Reset of the shot clock. It stays Penn State ball with the two and a half to go in the opening half. That was a save by Kearson. And we're gonna get a dead ball timeout by the Ohio State Buckeyes. Both teams will be huddling up for instructions. Just tuning in with us, Penn State at eight and one, Ohio State at seven and one. We mentioned they're both the residing in the top 10 and Jeff Tambroni's squad. It was interesting, I thought, to hear from uh, Maryland head coach John Tillman. He matter-of-factly told us this week, Penn State is the new standard. And that's high praise coming from John Tillman. I mean, he got to see the Blitzkrieg up and up close and personal a week ago in, in College Park. Penn State has so many pieces offensively. You talk about Jack Kelly missing the game tonight. Well, he missed the game two weeks ago against Cleveland State, in addition to Dan Rume and Townsend as well. And they just had Donnelly and trainer step up along with Nick Spillane. So this team offensively has so many pieces that fit the strategy of Jeff Tambroni and offensive coordinator John Hawes. And then you look at the defensive end. Again, we, we were talking about this as being, that's been the bugaboo of Penn State, and they're going to give up goals. When you play fast pace, high octane, as Penn State does, high risk, high reward lacrosse, you're going to leave your defense vulnerable, but you really got to tip your cap to Peck, uh, Sabia, and Cardio. And as, especially Colby Kinnis as well. This is a defense that has finally matured and really grown up, and they're playing some pretty strong lacrosse. Coach Tambroni, he was asking his guys to invest in practice all week, make your actions uh, work louder than your words, get back to focus on those little things, even with that uh, major win over Maryland now. A notch for them as Amit sent it wide. Hovering around the two minute mark in quarter two. Malone brings it in off the end line against McConney. Runs right by him and Kearson makes a big stop. And you see Malone wishes he could have that one back. Great save by Kearson. And this game has been up and down here in the second quarter. A lot of folks will say Ohio State can't play a fast pace. Well, they're getting up and down the field just nice. Matt Borges, great ground ball work. Good clears by the midfielders. The the problem with Ohio State has been in the 6-on-6, six six, the settled situation, winning their matchups consistently and, and trying to solve Colby Kinnis. 
And that's where we are right now, late in the half with Jasinski on the ball. Myers is a long way from the cooker. Lucas Buckley slashing down that wing. Gets goal line extended on the swim. Buckley gets inside the score. A dazzling goal from Lucas Buckley. I'm going to have to get a look at the replay to see how Buckley's able to get this past Colby Canise. That was sweet. Nice job as he just pushes goal line extended. Looks like he's going to be able to get a slivel, sliver of leverage. First down here, we talked about Kearson having to step up and make saves. This is a beauty because, in essence, this is a two-goal turnaround. That should have been a goal had it not been for Kearson. You go to the other end and watch Buckley. Little swim move, gets leverage, and he's going to leave his feet, and that's terrific wrist strength. And he dives outside of the crease. Great individual effort by Lucas Buckley. That is a shot in the arm Ohio State really needed. The ball is awarded to Penn State off the draw with 1.15 to go in the second quarter. Indy Lions clinging to that 6-4 advantage. So you look at the difference in the goal scoring tonight. All four Ohio State goals unassisted off of 101s, whereas Penn State aim it four assists. So Penn State, their offense predicated a little bit more with the off-ball play, and, and Ohio State here tonight winning those individual matchups to get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Trainer finds Buller. Trainer has points in five straight. Final minute of the opening half. Willard comes to get it on the exchange with O'Keefe. One away from the Penn State all-time goal scoring record. O'Keefe fires. It's off of Kearson and in. The record is tied. Mac O'Keefe with another dart that would not be denied. Gonna get a look at the replay, but I think Kearson's gonna wish he had that one back. He, he, he tracked it. He saw it, body was in position to make the save, but it's just gonna have enough pepper on it to sneak by. Defender falls down, you know what's coming, and there's Kearson, he was on it. He saw it, but maybe the slick surface caused a little bit of a weird skip as it just gets between the wickets of Josh Kearson. That is that smooth shooting stroke, and I tell you what, when that that's, that's a, when you have a defender fall down, you got Mac O'Keefe staring you right in the eye. That is not a good feeling as a goaltender. He's tied Will Driscoll's all-time mark. Driscoll, who left these parts as a collegiate athlete in 2002. It's the eighth hat trick of the season for Mac O'Keefe. Five seconds left in this second quarter. It's bowled on down. A snappy backhand there from Dylan Foles that goes wide. And an action-packed first 30 minutes comes to its end. Congrats to Mac O'Keefe. He now shares the record here in these parts. His hat trick. Those three goals lifting Penn State past Ohio State. 7-4 at the halftime break. Great, great effort by this Penn State team. They didn't have the ball. They only had the ball for about three and a half minutes in the first quarter of action, but we're still able to come away with a 3-3 tie and here in the second quarter, capitalizing on Grant Amon feeds. Of course, Mac O'Keefe shooting to get themselves a little bit of distance and, and go into halftime with this three-goal advantage. The rain not bothering the student section, the pandemonium <laughs> Penn State lacrosse student section. 7-4, Nittany Lions after 30 minutes. Jeff Tambroni is going to spend a little time with us and coach what did you like best about your team's performance in that first half patience you know ohio state really controlled the ball in that first quarter won a lot of face-offs really did a great job in their offensive end i thought they took care of the ball very well but i thought our offense stayed patient i thought our defense stayed patient through long possession so i'm hoping that these guys can just continue to grind it out until we can see if we can open it up a little bit in the second half yeah, Coach, what did you like most about your defense? I mean, they held Ohio State a ton of possession time. They dominated possession, particularly in the first quarter. What did you like most about your close unit in Colby Canise? 
you know, I thought they're collaborating very well together. You know, against Maryland, I thought we did a good job of, of both co collaborating well together and uh, taking care of the details, just the little things that, that I thought made us better last week. And, you know, I thought for longer stretches, and, and those things can go by the wayside the longer the possession goes. And, you know, Ohio State did a good job on a couple of possessions that they got resets twice and three times. And I was proud of the way they just kind of hung in there and, and dug in and got stops. And I think Colby was seeing the ball fairly well in the first half as well. Jeff, get out of the rain. We appreciate the knowledge. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Two quarters complete. Jumping for joy here at University Park, PA. The best offense in the land on display. Penn State, 7-4 against Ohio State. Halftime festivities coming up on BTN. Start the third quarter. Ohio State and Penn State. Ohio State coach Nick Myers is with us. Coach, what needs to happen for your team to get back on top in the third quarter? You know, we got to get back to some of the things that we did uh, early on in the game. You know, picking up the ground balls, the X. I think we're competing hard. The wing play, uh, Justin's doing a great job. Uh, you know, halftime stats, we're, we're getting shots. We're getting opportunities. We've got to shoot a little bit better than we did in the second quarter. And really like the way we settled down defensively. Thanks for setting us straight, Coach. Go get them. Hey, great. Thank you. Third quarter set to unfold. Buckeyes coming in under Coach Myers' direction at 7-1. and one. That lone loss coming last week at home at the uh, shoe to Rutgers, a 14-6 decision. You look at the face-off story, we expected it would be tight, and it has been between Anasio and Arceri. Penn State at 8-1, fresh from the program's first-ever win over Maryland a week ago. Solid showing, 13-10. Penn State will travel to Ann Arbor for its next game. Ohio State, they'll go to Baltimore to see Johns Hopkins high noon a week from today. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you. It's college lacrosse on BTN. Officiating crew, Messrs. McCloskey, Buchanan, and Miller. As the first possession of the third quarter belongs to Penn State. Nice face-off right there by Arceri, winning it to himself, and that's Arceri's mojo. It continues and, and it rolls up as the game goes on. It gets better as the game gets deeper. Jeff Tambroni, the Penn State coach, says we're better built around Arceri now to support his efforts. Well documented that Grant Amon missed last season with an injury. Tommy Wright, their starting long stick midi, was also absent in 2018. His return has really bolstered this unit and this team as well. Nick Spillane's going to bring the ball in off the sideline. Spillane, a 22-year-old senior from New York. Rayum is next. Then send it all the way out wide to Malone. TJ feeds. O'Keefe is now one goal away from the record himself. He'll snap this one at Pearson who vacuums it up. Mac O'Keefe tying the Penn State to all-time goal-scoring record in the opening half. Great job by O'Keefe, but that is a huge save for Kearson, who struggled with only two saves in the first half. If he can get a couple of stops, keep Penn State at bay, it obviously gives his offense a chance to chip away. We played probably the first five or six minutes of this game under overcast skies. Since that point, it's been raining steadily and it continues to do so. Has not hampered the outstanding play on the field. No, it hasn't. And the, the players have adjusted really well. Couple slips there in the second quarter. Smith lets this one go a little high on Kines. Colby Smith can, can tattoo from that point on the field. That was from the other side of the field is where he scored the game winner in overtime against Notre Dame. Smith, who's had three different multi-goal games this season not yet on the board for Ohio State LeClaire has a pair Jasinski and Buckley rounding out the Buckeye strikes Jasinski's the whirling dervish back behind the goal Jasinski gets inside had that one blocked ball down beautiful movement there on the ground by Cardeal as he shovels it ahead but Borges takes it on the run Borges is a magnet for ground balls I mean that was on the run on the hop he made a couple great ground ball pickups in the defensive end in the first half. He is slick. What's the, the best carpet. way to describe his anticipation? He just seems like he knows where it's going. Just He's athletic and he's fast and confidence. He 
burst to the ball. I mean, for, we talk about first-time grounders in the defensive end all the time. If he geeks that, it's a three-on-two for Penn State. The other way, he's got the confidence and the handle to, to make those great pickups. Kanise made the stop there on Jackson Reed. Kanise overflowing with confidence in this game. Second week in a row, Ohio State has run into a hot goaltender. That's the eighth save of the game for Kanise. We mentioned he made a season best 16 against the Ohio State a season ago in a 12-4 Penn State win. 7-4 at the moment for the guys in the white jerseys. Jack Trainer on the ball. No Jack Kelly tonight for Penn State. He was a, a late scratch. Amen, picked up by Borges. Around the Willard screen. Nate Buller is there. Amen, the leading point producer for Penn State. He's had seven assists or more four different times this year. Ridiculous. Four already tonight at last check. Draws a couple defenders down low. And it's stashed home by Dylan Folds. Second time in this possession. Dylan Folds has been naked on the backside. Caleb Mahoney for Ohio State was able to recover about 45 seconds before Amon does this. And this is the first time that Ohio State has been caught really ball watching. Nice defense by Borges. No reason to slide right there. No reason whatsoever. You create offense, you leave Folds naked, and he sticks it. Folds naked on the back side. Get that man some pants. <laughs> Please. It's a family show. As long as you score a goal, it doesn't matter what you wear to the party. Grant Amen as the host of the party, just sharing the ball beautifully once more in this contest. Chris overruns the ground ball. Fox is there too, the long stick midfielders, the wing players. As it comes up off the ground for Cardiel, he'll sprinkle it out wide for Braden Peck. And away come the Nittany Lions on a successful clear. McAvoy on the feed, Spillane on the run. Stop by Kearson. Kearson getting down quickly to make that one. He loops it over the top for Tarafenko. Tarafenko upset there. There's going to be a foul called against Penn State. Look how hard he chugs. Tarafenko is a bull when he gets the ball on his stick. Young midfielders keep moving forward, especially short stick D middies. Good things are going to happen if you just trust your ability. He never stops. Nick never. Myers is always talking about his stamina. Yeah, uh, stamina and strength. I mean, that's like a running back. Get just, just bursting through the hole and fighting for yardage and getting into the open field. He's so tough and gritty, and he draws the penalty. Ohio State soon to go extra man. There's a flag down. Buckeyes need to string some goals together. Jack Myers has been relatively quiet tonight. Outstanding freshman point producer who had a seven-goal game against Bucknell earlier this season. Jasinski just hanging out at the top. Kevin Fox will cover him up. Jasinski runs by. He hangs that stick a little, though. The trail check is made. And now Penn State will go a man down. You're down 8-4. Your offense is struggling against a hot goaltender. This might be the elixir Ohio State needs. As you see the infraction there, Jeff Tambroni's team goes down one man, and this is an area where Nick Myers said his guys have to be better. Their extra man unit has been unacceptable, in his words, to this point in the season. They were 0 for 4 last week, and on the campaign, you can tell, just 24% overall. Yeah, you really want to get that percentage up to 35, even maybe 40% if you're Ohio State. See if the practice has paid off for this extra man unit. Bluffing over the top. Myers will feed it. Slingshot from the wing that was canceled out. Smith let it go. Chased down there by the attackman, Reed. 
Myers bluffs it from the top, jump shot here, set wide by Tarafenko, backed up, it'll stay, Ohio State possession. You can see Myers once that skip pass down to the low corner, that time he fed it to Jasinski, good penalty kill as we look to be back to even strength for Penn State. I thought Myers held the ball a little bit too much. He got the looks that he wanted, but I think if he would have been a little bit more snappy with that. But then again, the guys have to get open. I thought he was staring down guys a little bit too much. And LeClaire was inside, just being shadowed by Sabia all the way. Chris Sabia, four years as a starter on the back end for Penn State. Highly decorated second team all-conference performer. There he is. This rip from the outside at 1,000 miles an hour hit the crossbar can only be Trey LeClaire. That thing is still shaking in the Panzer environment here. That was a nasty rip by well, Trey LeClaire. Mark, he doesn't get shortchanged. No. He had everything behind that. It's almost like the, the goalpost said something to him. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> yeah, well. Got smart with him, said Alj after he tattooed it. LeClaire again. Works in. Gets help. Double team from Cardeal. On the roll, question mark there. There's another flag down. Jasinski in possession. Penn State is going to go a, a man down once more. As we hit the midway mark of this third quarter. Nittany Lions doubling up the Buckeyes 8-4 on BTN. Ohio State is a team that uses a ton of picks, and they're using one right now. And I feel like they've gotten away from that pick game a little bit. Smith ran out of racetrack there. It's just Sabia ties him up. Another flag down. Way to draw the penalties, but it's just too much one-on-one -on -one and not enough ball movement. There's a cross check. Burns gets away with it. Buckley off the split. Rolls back into the double. Jasinski keeps it hot. Great pass. Myers in time to scores. Myers from Reed, a thing of beauty. Wow. Two flags are on the field here. You could have had a third with maybe a cross check by Burns, and then I thought that was a late hit. After the ball was in the back of the cage, I think both of these fouls are going to be technical, so they're going to be wiped out, but the officials are talking it over right now just to see how they're going to adjudicate those two flags. But... Nice possession by Ohio State. When they move the ball, they are such a much more dangerous team. Great backside look, and I like how Myers caught it, spun around, and stuck it. And that should have been another flag for a late hit. I mean, watch. This ball's in the cage right there. And then he gets drilled. I hear a slash call on TJ Canelli. And Buckley, number seven for Ohio State, got away with one as he shoved the Penn State player, Brian Townsend, out of the way. So he could have gotten a flag right there. It's getting physical. Indeed. Canellan, who subs in on the man down unit for the Nittany Lions, puts them a man down himself. Myers gets his 14. Ohio State is within three. Well, not only did it work out by getting a goal, but now they get a great opportunity. So one of the flags was, I believe, a hold. That's wiped out by the goal, but the slash being a personal foul, even though the goal was scored, that is assessed, and it's a man-up face-off. And credit Ignacio for recognizing the open wing and getting it to him. A little fake flip there from Myers, interchanging with Reed. Those two, very crafty in their last setup from the top. Leclerc with an outside hammer. It's an extra man goal. Leclerc in the middle of this extra man offense. He doesn't have the passing ability of Jack Myers, but he has got the rocket right-handed shot. And this is just... A big boy stepping in with time and space. The defense has sloughed off of him a little bit. I like all the three cutters getting down there and basically dragging Penn State defenders to open it up. You can see the shout out from Canellan in the bench. Watch 44 as he just steps in that space vacated by the cutters and rips one home. 
Six minutes and change to go in the third. And now a two-goal game. And Inacio pops another draw for the Buckeyes. Leclerc with a hat trick, his seventh of the season. He has points in 19 straight games. Reed will slow the tempo a little bit. Myers is the third leading scorer for the squad. He's back behind the net, guarded by Colby Canise. And much like this, the first quarter, Ohio State dominating possession time here in this third stanza. Nick Musi's out there, 16 in the red right here. Teaming up with JT Bugliosi. Jack Jasinski is being shut off with a short sticker, was being shut off by a short sticker. Penn State, Robbie Black, right in the middle of your screen. 15 in the white. Myers turns, Clark deals with it. Sabia peeking out on LeClaire. Bugliosi against Peck. Here comes the double. Beautifully timed by Kevin Fox. What was that expression? No empty slides in the game tonight. If you're gonna go, make sure you get contact. Long range heave, late in the shot clock. A save there for Kinesse and a chance to clear now for Penn State. Amen calling for the ball, comes to midfield to get it. As he'll orchestrate the Nittany Lion offense with four and a half to go in the third quarter. Great show by Grant Amon. Saw it was a deep ride by Ohio State. His teammates were having a little bit of difficulty. I love that part of his game. And any young attackman, make yourself an outlet. Don't run away from the ball. Run toward it if you can be a safety valve or an option for your clearing midfielders. Amon off the split. Borges wasn't buying. Spillane gets into the alley. Rolls back. Sees the double coming. Move it quickly. Amen against Tarafenko. Wonderful matchup there. On the sneak, Malone was stopped as Kearson is starting to answer. Canise, save for save. Penn State offense just flying around. And Eric pass, that's, that's, that's disappointing if you're Ohio State. You get the defensive stop and then you give it right back. A failed clear as a result of that poor pass. And Rayum says, let's slow it down. Rayum has it, 26 in the white. McConney wasn't fooled by the fake flip hidden ball. This is TJ Malone, 20 year old from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Malone lowering his head. Tarafenko was there to bully him at the post. Amen. Zips that pass. Nick Spillane. The off-ball picks for Penn State are terrific. Amon, rightly so, is going to get the credit for the assist and the great vision, but Spillane using the picks inside and getting that much area with which to operate is what makes this play. I love Spillane. I voted for him as a first-team All-American in the mid-season inside lacrosse votes. Look at that pick. He draws, the Dylan Folds draws two red jerseys. Spillane has all that room. In Panzer Stadium, they were warming up, and I noticed this, Van Halen's top of the world, hey. knowing that they're number one ranked. Enjoying it. This is a great crowd, great atmosphere here at Panzer Stadium. A lot of lacrosse left to be played before April 27th, but you can always circle your calendar for Johns Hopkins, Maryland. Blue Jays 2-0 right now in the Big Ten. Joey Epstein, maybe the offensive freshman of the year in the conference. He's having a sensational run. And then the University of Maryland Terrapins. I love Roman Puglisi, the short stick D midi. For my money, maybe the most improved player in the country this year. You and I will be there for that tilt. I am looking forward to it on the 27th of April. This one has been an outstanding game. Lacrosse, college lacrosse action on BTN 9-6 in favor of uh, top-ranked Penn State. Ohio State in the red jerseys working here at the offensive end. Car deal is latched onto Myers as the Buckeyes work six on six. Jack Jasinski didn't have a point against uh, Rutgers last week. Saw his 19 game point streak come to an end. Ditto for Jackson Reed too. 
car deal. Pushing out there. Myers, the lanky freshman, brings it this way for Reed. 35 seconds in the shot clock. Reed playing a two-man game around the screen from Smith. Fires! Short side to score with just a sliver of space. Colby Kinese was either surprised that Reed shot it or he was guessing. But either way, that is a heavy release from Jackson Reed. Whereas Mac O'Keefe can kind of skip and crow hop backwards. Look at Jackson Reed. He uses the pick. I mentioned I thought Ohio State needed to get back to their pick game. Double pick by Colby Smith. And there you see Kinese. He was crouching. He was low. He was guessing. And he was baiting Jackson Reed. He takes the bait and he says, I'll take your bait. I'll take your fish. And I'm going to go home with a goal. From such a sharp, that was an acute angle to find that room. Jackson Reed tallies in eight of his nine games this year. Another win of the draw right to the cage. And Kinese makes the stab on Anasio. You can see Colby Kinese and his ability when he doesn't guess. He stayed straight up and down. Great windshield wiper save. Stick across his face. Nick McAvoy brings it across for the Nittany Lions. Final two minutes of quarter number three. Ament has six assists tonight. Excellent vision. And he is truly a pass first, second, and third. Shoot fourth. Willard on the run. Fires and scores! Cole Willard flashing to the net. I love it when defense on one end turns into offense on the other. Big goal, Cole. After Colby Kinese is able to stand up to Inacio's high delivery. Great save. And then when the Nittany Lions need something to happen, we saw this week again, last week against Merrill. Look at Willie. He's a righty. They want to try to make him go left, but there's no closeout. He's able to cruise down the alley left, get the stick back in his right, and slip it past Kearson. But Colby Kinese. Nice save after that, giving up that goal to Jackson Reed. Penn State's picking on Logan McConney. McConney, the understudy to Ryan Tarafenko, and scholar athlete at Ohio State. On the board for the second time, Cole Willard. His first two goal game of the season. Penn State right back with the ball in one minute and 25 seconds to operate. Short stick D middies are a lot like cornerbacks in football. You've got the one guy who's your number one, maybe your lockdown guy, and for Penn or Ohio State, that's Ryan Tarafenko. So you pick on the number two, much like a quarterback is picking on the lesser of the two corner. And I don't mean that as any disrespect to Logan McConney, because he's a heck of a player in his own right, but Penn State would rather stay away from Tarafenko and, 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 and attack McConney, and they, they're doing that so far here tonight. Amen on the feed, O'Keefe fires, and that's stopped there by Kearson. Kearson will take it for a ride, moving the lacrosse ball back on the clear for Ohio State. Final 45 seconds of the frame. The Buckeyes, should they choose, they could hold for the balance of this quarter. The shot clock is at 60. Lucas Buckley wants it. Buckley has uh, one of the best-looking goals of the night. He and Jasinski are igniters for the Buckeyes. He's calling for that pick. 23rd meeting all time between these two schools. Penn State a winner 16 of the first 22. Jasinski on the sprint over the top. Too tall there for Reed. Collected. Here's LeClaire. Missing on the short side at the uh, final second. One last fling towards the crease. It'll fall incomplete with a flag, though, at the final horn as Colby Smith was knocked down. That's going to be a dead ball foul on Penn State, if my eyes don't deceive me, which means no faceoff. Possession, Ohio State, to start the fourth quarter. Take a look right here. Burns just trying to make a play, but you can't follow through on that hit. 
when you clearly can hear the horn, or at least the, the horn was going off. I don't know if Burns heard it or not, but you got to let up on that. If, if you would have knocked him to the ground, it would have been okay. There's the explanation. And as Mark Dixon mentioned, possession to start the fourth. 15 minutes to go in regulation time. Back for more. College lacrosse on BTN. B. Burns in the penalty box for Penn State. Ohio State goes to extra man. The Nittany Lions have a 10-7 lead after three quarters. Colby Kinese has made 11 stops. Penn State, 10-plus goals mark in all 10 games this season. It's their best stretch since 1995. Electric offense. They were putting up football scores earlier this season with some of the wins that they were having, 27 to 10, 17, 7, 19, 13 against Cornell. I mean, this is just a, a prolific offensive team, but the difference in this game has been Colby Kinese, 11 saves. I saw two dozen against Jacksonville in a game that was played in Charlotte. Feet inside, Tara Fanko zipped it wide. Nice looking setup there on the extra man for the Buckeyes. Terrafenko is a quote-unquote short stick D midi, but he's so talented. We've seen him take a couple of offensive shifts, and he's on the man up. It's a do-it-all kind of midi. I need to talk with him, though. I really do. it Before he leaves, I need to ask him about his high school days playing as a water polo goalie. I just, I, I haven't had the chance to ask him about it. It's not every day you meet a lacrosse player that also played water polo. Uh-huh. Smith running for cover. Myers heaves this one, and that's fought off by Kinese. A dozen stops now for the netminder. Early stages of the fourth. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you. Timeout called here. And we will take it along with these two top teams. Two of the best seven in the land. Battling down the stretch here in University Park, PA. Nittany Lions out in front by three. Coming up next on BTN, the big show recaps everything happening in the conference. Highlights, interviews, in-depth expert analysis coming your way on the big show next right here on BTN. The rain perhaps at its heaviest on the night and the two goaltenders in their respective creases seeing their save totals rise. Kearson was shaky early in the game. Only two saves in the first half, but he's played incredibly well here in the second half. But that 4-1 run that Penn State made in the second quarter is a difference in the game. And during that second period, Colby Kinese was making a number of his 12 saves in that time frame where, where Kearson was struggling. And so far, Colby Kinese is a difference in this game. Buckeyes get it set. Tarafenko from the top. Myers on the outside. Chopping in him. Myers has been with car deal for most of the night. Townsend will peek out on Colby Smith and leisurely play this for Jasinski. And out of that last, out of that Ohio State timeout, Penn State elected to shut off uh, Trey LeClaire. Back to six on six now. Buckley feeds, LeClaire fires. And Kinese was shortening up in his crease to make that one. Trey LeClaire is a shooting machine. Jasinski's going to invert now against T.J. Kanellen. Jasinski off of a pick. The pass is just behind its intended target. He was looking for Reed, and now Kinese will start the clear with Kanellen. Another empty possession for Ohio State. Really could have used a goal right there, but this defense for the Buckeyes, I think they've been playing it pretty, pretty darn well. And see if they can create another turnover. Spillane, fleet-footed midfielder, brings it in. As we go six on six for the guys in white. A Penn State squad that knocked off number three, Maryland, last Sunday. Malone on the go against McConney. McConney bodies up. Amen off the exchange, picked up there by Borges. He has a defender hung up. Kearson hedges out to play it. Amen towards the empty goal, sent it wide as Kearson retreated back into his crease. Even with the ankle injury, Grant Amen still so quick, and he just gets to his spots so fast. Mark, I was able to watch you and Pete Medhurst a weekend ago, and it looked like Amen was hurting by the end of that night. No signs of that tonight. 
Great news for Penn State. Here's Ament again with it. Evan Riss is on him. Riss part of a very talented sophomore class for Ohio State. Spillane let it come through. O'Keefe swarmed by Buckeye defenders. Unfortunate for Ohio State. That loose ball push comes with two seconds left in the shot clock. Not only does it remain Nittany Lion ball, but that is a reset of the 82nd shot clock. As regulation time continues to drift away, 11.45 in the fourth. Amen playing a two-man game. O'Keefe comes to get it. Henrik there with a takeaway check. O'Keefe finds it. One hands it wide of the goal. That had a potential BTN standout written all over it. That would be the way you'd want to set your college program's all-time goal-scoring record, wouldn't you think? Folds. Amen. And around she comes for Spillane. Dan Rayom has been quiet so far tonight. Rayom going to the goal, spins back. O'Keefe will exchange for Amen against Borges. Amen says, I'll take this one myself. You have to respect Grant Amen as a passer first, shooter second. And he takes this little bit of indecision of the Ohio State defense and uses it to his maximum advantage. Rain continues to fall here at Panzer Stadium, but the fans, they're not going anywhere. They're number one, and their number one player, Grant Amon, making it happen. Naked on the backside, gets it. Little pick by Folds, steps into space. No slide. Comes to Grant Amon, and he's able to stick it past the Ohio State goaltender. Nittany Lions teammates love it. Off this draw, it comes up for Red. A bad pass though, that feed from Brandon Barker gets away, it's chased down on the sideline. You have 20 seconds to get it across the midline nowadays with the 80 second shot clock. No worries for Ohio State. Yeah, we get it across with 63. On the sprint, Jasinski spinning through traffic. Manages to keep the ball in its cross until that takeaway check from Fox. Possession for the Nittany Lions. Wow. Sprinting with it, it's Sabian. What a check by Fox. A little ice pick action over the head of Jack Jasinski to get the ball on the ground. I think they're going to call that it was a illegal touch or a clamp on Ohio State giving... Penn State the ball. That was the signal from the two officials close by. We have seen extraordinary skills on display. Two of the top seven teams in the land out of the Big Ten Conference. Jack Trainer's an 18-year-old freshman ready to go. Trainer running by his chest. Picked up there by Caleb Mahoney. Malone watching aim at work. Aim at spins. O'Keefe pump fake. O'Keefe will not re-dodge there. They'll bring it back around and balance up for Cole Willard. O'Keefe does have a short stick. Now the switch happened. Willard off the swim, gets inside, and he roofs one. Cole Willard. Big goal call times three. I love the way he dodges hard to the cage, and I love the way Willard takes the middle of the field. Willard only a sophomore. He was on the field with two freshmen in Malone and Trainer. How about that for a midfield in a Big Ten lacrosse game? A sophomore and two freshmen. Watch this check by Fox. Little ice pick. Whirling Dervish, Jasinski holding it a little too much. Right there. Beautiful job taking the ball away, and then Jasinski was laying on it. That's a legal procedure. And look at Willard. I love the way he just finds a way to get to the middle of the field. He's got that quick release, and he's hit late right there. Illegal body check. And they're going to call that a dead ball foul. So no possession. I'm sure no face-off. Possession. Make it, take it right to the Nittany Lions. Cole Willard, who once scored 81 goals his senior year, all-central New York performer, player of the year, with a hat trick tonight. Joining his other high-scoring friends in the white jerseys. This is the largest lead on the game for Penn State at 12-7. So 
switch the point of attack. It's fold straight away. Penn State's man up offense has been lethal. Through the seam there, deflected down though, and Kearson comes up with it in the crease. Buckeyes driving away with Logan McConney. Great clear. Again, another guy who just trusts his athleticism, has confidence in his ability, and runs north-south, not east-west, clearing the ball. Talking about that depth in the stable of short stick D midfielders, Tarafanko, McConney, Barker, DeBerry, you'll see them all off of Nick Myers' bench. Time's a wasted now in the short-handed situation for the Buckeyes. They'll get a man back right now and balance up. Buckeyes, perfect on the road this season. Part of a seven and one mark, the lone blemish a, a week ago in Columbus, hammered by Rutgers. Buckeyes working here at the offensive end. Falling away, that shot was blocked. Jasinski has it. Bring it back for LeClaire. Smith against the short stick deep. Feeds, hires on the inside roll. Help comes. Well timed there on the double. Sabia made the strip. His pass is a bit too tall for Burns. It'll roll all the way back into the defensive third. Ohio State clamps onto it. Borges, who has five ground balls tonight, coming away on the clear. Yeah, Borges did play some long stick midfield early in his career for Ohio State, but when you talk about the losses to graduation, Freddie Freibot, long stick midi, Eric Evans, and Ben Randall, first first team All-American in the history of Ohio State lacrosse. He was needed on that defensive end, along with Jeff Henrik, who also ran some pole during his early days as a Buckeye. Buckeyes have to start chipping away now, halfway through the fourth quarter. They're down by a handful. Jasinski puts the cross in his left hand. LeClaire, steady as she goes from the top against Sabia. Fires! Scores! Trey LeClaire does it again. Nasty, filthy, lethal. Pick any adjective to describe the delivery of Trey LeClaire, and it would be appropriate. Love how he just establishes space when he gets that room. Stutter step, uses a pick right there. So Sabia cannot close out on him, and he's gonna post up and let her rip. Not many are better in the game when he has his feet set than number 44. Back to the face-off X we go. Important possession time, important draw now between Anasio and Arceri. It's scooped on out. They fight for the ground ball. Anasio staying with it. And it'll come up for Penn State. On the run, Kevin Fox. Great ground ball by Fox. He's made two huge plays here in the fourth quarter. The deficit for the Buckeyes is four. Six and a half to go in an exciting Sunday night matchup with college lacrosse on BTN. Throughout the raindrops for most of three and a half quarters. We talked about the youth of the Penn State midfield. That wasn't necessarily by design. Kevin Hill, a midfielder, injured in their first game of the season against Villanova and lost for the campaign. So. They've had to make do with some younger players. Spillane off the swim move, drawing the double. Skip a man. As Foles tried to keep it hot, it's down on the deck. It'll come up for Joey Salisbury and the Buckeyes. A much needed defensive stop there. Buckeye team continuing to fight. A week ago, they were the last undefeated team left in Division I lacrosse after knocking off Notre Dame for the first time since 2005. And now they're staring 0-2 in the Big Ten in the face if they can't rally in this one. The Buckeyes, the best clearing team in the conference. Smith fires. That one rattles around off of Kines and maybe a bit of the iron as it ricochets out of play. I think people need to, to realize, though, even if, if Ohio State goes down 0-2, they still have three conference games in front of them, one of which is the Maryland Terrapins in Columbus. 
And then you get to that Big Ten tournament, anything is possible. That's why those four spots are so coveted. LeClaire taking the lacrosse ball for a ride. Runs into Tommy Wright. Wright, who red-shirted a season ago. Mark was mentioning his injury travails. Smith has some room. He'll fire. And he vacuums that up real easily. Car deal racing across the midline. Exchanging with Townsend. Townsend was the man who started the scoring tonight for Penn State. A 12-8 leader at the moment. Colby Kniece, five times in double figures prior to tonight in saves. He's got 14 this evening. Having watched him now for three years, I like it when he doesn't guess and he doesn't bait shooters. When he just plays straight up, he's tough to beat. He plays great positioning when he stays exclamation point rigid. Listed at five foot ten, there was a time in his freshman year where he'd play a little bit too low in some people's estimation. Trainer racing in feeds. Okay, fires wide of the net. Quick backup and restart from Amen. Penn State interested in going to the goal again quickly. Amen drops his head. Skips it to the front door there, deflects it, it's Pearson who has it, but there's a whistle around the crease. Referee was going to throw the flag, he had it in his hand, instead it's a loose ball push. Possession will stay with Penn State. And a reset of the shot clock. An Ohio State team that started the year at 7-0, they were the lone unblemished team in the Big Top 10 Conference at the start of conference play last week hoping to make amends for a, a misstep at home against Rutgers they have played Penn State strongly tonight not sure what the issue is trying to figure out the shot clock I mean if it's a if it's a push on Ohio State that's a technical violation. That is an automatic reset, but they, I guess the shot clock didn't reset in time. So it was reading 78 seconds when the refs blew the whistle. They've reset it to 72. 321 on the big board, which really matters as Penn State tries to run time off of the clock and hold on to a four goal advantage. Well, coming into this game, we talked about at top of the show, this was about how Penn State handles success. That success being their first ever win against Maryland. In a lot of people's eyes, this team is the most complete team right now in college across and a front runner, not only to get to championship weekend, but maybe win an NCAA title. We gotta keep in mind that this Penn State team has never won an NCAA tournament game. And talking with Jeff Tamburni the last couple weeks, I had him on my D Fly Dixie podcast on Inside Lacrosse. He said he's had to learn not to put so much pressure on his players. Amen. Towards the open goal. He scores. The field general recognizing the situation and making no mistake from long range. With short time, Ohio State has to go to desperate measures. Kearson out of his goal crease to mark up. And great recognition by Grant Amen. Just working. And he realizes Kearson, when he looks up, is right to his left, about seven yards away. So he's just going to post up to the empty net. And just like his feeds are spot on, that shot to the empty net was in the perfect place. It is fun to watch Penn State play offense for Jeff Tambroni. They started the night leading seven different statistical categories around the nation in offense. 13 more won't hurt. As O'Keefe runs for some cover. This result holds. We're going to see Penn State join Johns Hopkins at 2-0 atop the standings in the Big Ten. Nittany Lions will go to Ann Arbor next weekend to take on an 0-2 Michigan team. The Blue Jays host this Ohio State ball club in Baltimore next week. Officials over to talk at the table again. Go, 
Coach Tambroni watching uh, his mates work. It was a 3-3 game at the end of one quarter. Penn State opened up a 7-4 advantage at the half. The two teams exchanged three goals in the third quarter. Penn State has lengthened its lead with a very productive fourth. Again, Ohio State asking Kearson to leave and vacate the crease and try and force a turnover here. Mac O'Keefe, who has tied the Penn State all-time goal-scoring record tonight with his hat trick. Marked by Henrik halfway through the shot clock. Fans at Panzer Stadium singing in salute of this top-ranked team. This is a rule where the shot clock reset on a technical violation. There's been some discussion by the rules committee to maybe examine that and after have it maybe only reset to 60 or, or other increments. Because 80 seconds is a long time. In full keep away mode here, it's Kearson with a big stop. Kearson made the save at point blank range as the Buckeyes have 66 seconds left in the fourth. Tarafenko off the roll. Exchanges to LeClaire. LeClaire from a severe angle. Measured there on the outside by Sabia. There's a whistle with 50 seconds to go. Loose ball push against Penn State. If you're Ohio State, you're gonna watch this film. You had your opportunities in the first half. Colby Kniez, terrific saves. Myers acrobatically going to the goal. A flag down. Jack Myers with a brilliant move. No goal signal. It looks like they're gonna charge Myers with diving into the goal mouth. The officials again in conference after this. You gotta dive away from the goal and we're gonna see Myers diving right into what is an invisible goal mouth. Imagine the shape of an ice cream cone. There's the dive call against Myers. So if he would have do dove across the face of the cross, away, yeah, exactly. And away is the word that you guys are often using for the legal dive, across or away, not into the goal mouth. And it's an unsportsmanlike penalty when you dive into the goal mouth, which translates into a one-minute non-releasable penalty. Head coach Nick Myers right there to console Jack Myers. A terrific effort. As a horn blares out, stopping things with 44 ticks left. Shot clock never started. And even though time is short below the 80 seconds, the shot clock has never turned off as it is in college basketball, just in case there's any penalty situations or carryover time. Timekeepers are getting a lot of air time. I'll tell you what. More than you and me. I, I mean, they're they're getting, they're, they're uh, Instagram and Snapchat's probably blowing up right about now. Penn State, a 13-8 leader, poised to improve to 9-1, setting up for a matchup in Ann Arbor on Saturday with Michigan. Foles dragging it away from some pressure. There's Rayum. A half a minute left in this one. Penn State can run out the balance of time. It'll be their fourth straight win over Ohio State. The Buckeyes will fall to seven and two, a second consecutive setback in conference play. That will be true in seven seconds now. And Grant Amen, who had another dazzling night, a fantastic night for the playmaking attackmen. This one's in the books, a 13-8 final for top-ranked Penn State. Great job for the Nittany Lions, sending home the Panzamonium. <laughs> Faithful, very, very happy. 
good effort by Ohio State. This was a really good Big Ten lacrosse game. Physical, gritty. Both teams left it all out on the field, but at the end of the day, too much Grant Amon on the offensive end, too much Colby Kinese between the pipes. Too much Grant Amon means two plus six equals eight. Eight points for Amen, who earlier in the season had 10 point games against Villanova and Jacksonville. Another masterful performance tonight from number one. Incredible. And when you consider he's playing on a hurt ankle that he re-injured last week. I mean, a lot of therapy. Probably doesn't practice a whole lot at full speed, so he's healthy and has enough gas in the tank for game day. But no one has figured out a way to contain number one. The only thing that can keep him off the score sheet is an injury that keeps him off the field. Both squads huddling up after a well-played 60-minute lacrosse game. A good 55 of those minutes in the rain, but it never seemed to, to dampen anyone's spirits in the stands or soften up any of the play on the field. Well, this, this facility was a, a many years in the making, and it was supposed to be ready for the 2018 season. Construction delays, but we have it in 2019, and why not? I mean, it's a great venue for college lacrosse. And, hey, when your team's number one in, in a school that's known for football, when you have a lacrosse team that's ranked number one, and number one with a bullet, by the way. I mean, this right now is the best team in college lacrosse. The only blemish on their record, a one-goal loss to the defending national champion, Yale Bulldogs. There's a lot to be excited about if you're a Penn State lacrosse fan. That loss at Yale by just one marker, 14-13. Victorious Penn State tonight with college lacrosse on BTN, a 13-8 final as they outpoint Ohio State 6-4 in the second half to take home the victory by five on home turf. Show of sportsmanship between these two outstanding teams. Could very well meet again down the road in the Big Ten Tournament, slated in early May for Rutgers and Piscataway, New Jersey. And think about the 13 goals scored tonight by Penn State. They're missing one of their top scorers, top six scorers, Jack Kelly, midfielder. Missed his second game in, in three weeks. And they just don't miss a beat. I mean, they just replenish and next man up to get the job done. Jeff Tambroni said, you know, we were looking forward to see how the response would be from the student section, from Check the it fans, out. <laughs> after downing Maryland last week. They hadn't played a home game in quite some time, and they do so tonight, and they have all the support in the world, even on a rainy night. And that's got to feel good for these players. It, re it really does, to have the support of the student body. I mentioned walking up to the, the press box a few hours ago, two hours before face-off. Fans were lined up. Students were lined up to get into the gate. It was pretty cool. A very well-constructed lacrosse team top ranked in the land has improved to 9-1 offensive spark plug Grant Amet joins us and Grant what was the difference uh, tonight you know I thought we definitely uh, still played as a as a unit offensively um, defensively we played uh, great as the possessions weren't always going uh, our way um, Colby stood on his head and uh, you know, we, we, we got some, some good uh, offensive routes from uh, Cole Willard and, and some other young guys, and they just continue to improve each and every week. Per usual, Grant, your vision was off the charts. Six assists here tonight. What's working for you in this Penn State offense? How has the game slowed down for you a little bit, especially as we're missing all of last season with the injury? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've said this before. I'm, I, I'm fortunate to have the off-ball guys that I have. Um, you know, Mac is very easy to find. Splain's easy to find. Dan Rayum's easy to find. Foldsy. I mean, I've said the list goes on and on, and they, they are very active off ball, and they're very timely in their cuts. And you know, they, they gave them hell off ball, um, which which definitely boded in our favor tonight. We know you guys can light up any scoreboard. On the other end, your defense really coming together as a great unit. And Colby Kinnis, the anchor. You get to shoot on him every day in practice. What stands out to you from number 34? You know, he just brings a lot of energy and competitiveness into the goal. Um, you know, he doesn't have a specific matchup against anybody, but he takes such pride in his crease. And, uh, you know, he finds a way to get, get his body on the ball or his shaft or whatever it, 
whatever it may be. Um, he just lays his body out there um, and flails at times, but it, it ends up working for us. Um, you know, they got a lot of restarts, and that, that wasn't great, but, you know, it's better than the ball in the back of the net. Grant, your teammate, Mac O'Keefe, ties the Penn State goal-scoring all-time record this evening. What makes him such a special scorer? Yeah, I mean, Mac is the best shooter I've ever played with. Um, probably go down when he graduates as one of, if not the best shooter to ever come through college lacrosse. Um, you know, he has so many different angles that he can shoot the ball from. Obviously, that low to high is his, is his famous uh, go-to, but, um, you know, he's incredible, inc incredibly crafty off ball, um, and he's really improving his on-ball ability as well. Um, he had a great dodging goal, made a kid fall over, which you don't see happen very much.